to uh, Cam Inman, 49er uh, insider for Odyssey. What's up, Cam? How are you, man? That's, that's good that it's not a labrum tear that he needs labrum surgery. I, I've seen <sighs> many quarterbacks have to do that recently, so that's probably good news, isn't it? Yeah, I would think so. I think last night, if you asked most Warrior fans, would you take two, three weeks or even a month or less, they would say, right. we'll take it. Um, speaking of injuries, yeah. will Brock Purdy be limited at all? Is he going to be playing through pain tonight? Yeah, he's playing because they didn't bring up uh, Jacob Eason off the practice squad. So uh, you have Purdy and then Josh Johnson as the backup. So the fact that they didn't um, bring on a third quarterback, that shows me that they they believe he's not going to be hindered for whatever their game plan is, which probably is going to be run the ball a lot. Um, but I think there's if, if he needs to, you know, here's the thing that worries me, Matt, is if Seattle's wide receivers, you know, get past the Niners secondary for a couple long touchdowns and Niners have to play pickup ball, then you're going to really find out how much pain he's going to have to go through. Like, cause, I mean, he's not a natural deep ball thrower, but this offense really doesn't, you know, for all the years we've seen with Kyle Shanahan, they don't take that many deep shots. It's more about the rhythm and timing and hitting in those uh, small to intermediate throws and, He's shown a propensity to do that and do it in the face of a pass rush. So they got confidence in him, and it's this is, I mean, this atmosphere. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty strong because it's, it's chill in the air. Everybody's already out pregame, and then we're what three, four hours, three hours before kickoff. Um, it's it's probably to me. I think it's the best outdoor environment in the NFL. All due respect to Kansas City. Yeah, we got our own John Dickinson out there, Cam. So if you run into yeah. him, tell him hello. I was driving in thinking about this as excited as I am for this game. The impact of the C-Mac acquisition, because if there were no Debo with no McCaffrey, I would be telling Steiny, oh, my goodness. <laughs> but how do you compute no Debo, McCaffrey there? Cam, I'm almost kind of like, is it a big deal? That is a big deal because, I mean, Debo does so much, right? Just having that extra asset on the field to make the defense pay attention to him but you're right the fact that McCaffrey's on Man. board what an, an MVP he's having I mean he's the offensive MVP and he can do so much right he can be that extra receiver uh, with you're, you're going to have IU you can have McCaffrey in the slot and then you have Jordan Mason in the back if you need to he's more of a bigger bodied running back which might suit them tonight so yeah I mean the, the fact that Debo's out it hurts obviously because he's an all pro talent it's like it's fine. He's not like having the wide receiver total that he did a year ago, but just the presence and the physicality that he can bring. Um, defense have to pay respect to that. Now, that's one person left on the field. So, yeah, it's, I don't think it's a great thing, but you're right. They, they can compensate that with McCaffrey. And I, you can, I think Kittle, Kittle could have a big game tonight, too. Cam Minman joining us on 95 7, the game, 49er uh, insider. Uh, Cam, you've, I got to imagine you've been to a, uh, almost every NFL stadium. Is Seattle the loudest? Mm hmm. I think so. I, I don't think there's any any place like it just because, I mean, I, Kansas City gets obviously really loud, and they have these, uh, whatever, the decibel wars between Seattle and Arrowhead of who can be the loudest. But um, the fact that it's a downtown stadium that everybody can walk to, so there's a lot of energy that comes into the stadium, and just the way the noise is with the roof overhangs. And, um, it can get really loud. I mean, heck, we just walked in this place about a half hour ago, and they're doing their practicing for the uh, Halftime show with Sir Mixon. It was already super loud, <laughs> and there's nobody in the stands yet. So uh, the the noise carries incredibly well. And yeah, I've, I've been to every NFL stadium except uh, Vegas, and that's coming up in oh, two nice. three weeks. Cam, this is essentially a playoff game for Seattle. I mean, they're right there. They've lost three of four. Geno Smith's been a great story. I, I know it's a team sport, but I got to ask you this: There's no award or shine like Defensive Player of the Year. Micah Parsons in Dallas the last couple of weeks been quiet. Cam, I feel like a three-sack game, even a two-sack game on prime time might seal it for Bosa. What do you say to that? I say I've been saying that almost every week for the last, what, 15 weeks. <laughs> is that everybody, you know what I mean? And it's like, and he, he will deliver a sack or two, but it's, he hasn't had like the big monster three-sack performance. Um, he... I, I and, and you know he had that hamstring injury two weeks ago, but I think Nick loves this. I mean, he's having a hell of a year in a yeah. contract season where I, I I think he's far and away the player of the year. Um, the uh, you know the Niners beat the Cowboys last year, and they didn't really come away respecting too much out of Michael Parsons. So um, 
I think everybody in that locker room would go to the wall and say Nick Bosa deserves defensive player of the year. But you're right. Hey, guess what? It's December. It's December football, and you're going to bleed into January, I guess. But this is the time of the year where you're going to shine. The stars come out to play, and um, he's going to have a shot to Geno Smith. I mean, he really could be the star of the game, and that's why you don't have to worry about pretty self. All right, Cam, enjoy the uh, game, and we'll catch up with you next week. Take Absolutely, it easy. guys. Enjoy it tonight, huh? Yeah, it's going to be fun.